Today we're looking at a bit of an interesting project I've been running for a while now. Back in early 2021, I was talking to my good friend Colin about trying to create a device that would help with trunk fusion. And we came up with this. Well, he pretty much did. Basically, it's a 3D printed box. And then as you can see, a 3D printed trunk. The idea is that the grey trunk plug goes inside the black box. And there's enough space between the two that you can grow some trees. Hopefully then, as this space is pretty tight, they're going to quickly run out of room and then have to grow into each other. This should make them fuse pretty quickly, but more importantly, they're hopefully going to end up taking the shape of the plug, which is why it's been designed to look the way it does. Basically, the end result of this experiment should be that a number of small little trees will all fuse together into one big tree and end up looking like the grey plug, which would be a pretty epic bonsai. Once we get the trunk fused, then we can move on to the next stage, which will be developing the branches. These are still going to take a while, but hopefully it's faster than growing a tree the more traditional way. As I'm talking here, I'll show you how they all fit together and show you how there'll be some space for the trees to grow. The theory of this all sounds pretty good, but we'll see what actually happens in reality. This is very much a prototype and an experiment that may go horribly wrong. Anyway, before we get properly started with this, I need to tell you about Colin's YouTube channel. He has nowhere near enough subscribers for the quality of the videos he makes. So go over to his channel after this video, it's called Boston Bonsai Idiot, and start watching. I'll put a link below so you have no excuse. I also want to say a huge thank you to Conrad, who made this whole thing possible. He did the 3D printing for us, and made this weird dream a reality. So thank you. I've also left some links for his website down in the description, so be sure to check him out too. This device has also come in a few parts, so that we can allow the lower half to fuse, and then when that looks good, add the next layer on and try and get the top to fuse if that makes sense. You can also see here that there's a hole going through the plug. This is so we can slide a bar through the middle, and that will go through the box and the plug, and that should sort of hold everything in place. It's not ideal, but we thought this would be better than the two parts being able to move around. If it's more rigid, it should force the trees to have nowhere to go and should push them into fusing together. If you have no idea what's going on, I think when I start planting the trees, it'll make a lot more sense. It's a pretty intense idea, but I think it's solid. Fusion works when trees have nowhere to go, so they sort of grow into each other. This box surely has to be better than just trying to bunch a couple of trees together and forcing them to fuse the old fashioned way. We are of course going to end up with a hollow trunk, since the plug will be in the centre. But I can live with that. If the final tree ends up looking like the shape of the plug, I'll be pretty happy. So yeah, it's pretty crazy. But let's get planting and see what happens. I'm going to be using cuttings for this experiment. I wasn't really sure what to use, but my olive tree was pretty overgrown. And it grows fast. So hopefully, it was the right choice. That means I can just sit the trunk on the soil and then add the box and feed the cuttings into the gap. Here's one of my cuttings, which of course hasn't fully rooted yet. It's been sat in water for a few days while I waited for this device to turn up in the post, but it will root. The plan is just to let them all grow up the trunk like this and then put the box on top and it's as easy as that. But of course the plan is to stick as many cuttings as possible around it. And here's the rest of cuttings I've got, which clearly isn't enough, which may be my downfall for this project. So here it is after the first initial planting. It's a mess, but that's fine. The real issue is that there just is not enough cuttings. So although it looks good and bushy, it's actually not. There's way too much space in here. So I'll just have to let these grow and then take more cuttings and plant them as I go. So here we are now in December 2021. This project was started in the spring, so it's now the end of the first growing season. And as you can see pretty quickly, nothing has gone to plan. I just don't have enough trees in here, and it's just full of gaps. So there's no way any fusion can happen. The trees have way too much space. If I flip it round to the other side, it's even worse. It's like three quarters empty. Now this is not through lack of trying. I don't know why, but every cutting I put in here died. The original ones pretty much all took, then after that, no more wanted to grow. At the end of the first year, we are currently failing miserably at getting this to fuse. 
Here in January 2022, you can see the trees that are in here did grow well. I basically gave up taking more cuttings over the summer and just allowed it to grow out, which is why it's all long and leggy here. My plan was to cut it back now, in the winter, and use these cuttings as well cuttings. So that's what I did. Here it is all cut back, where you can see there's really not a lot of trees, and just way too much space in there. Here it is after, with everything cut off, now being used as cuttings. In February, there are some signs of life. It's always good to see fresh new shoots popping. But it also looks like there's some dead ones too. These look a bit unhealthy. And really, if an olive is looking like this, it's probably dead. This seems to be the case all over the place. Shoots and dead looking ones. It actually looks like everything I pruned last month is shooting. But all the cuttings I added, well they're dying. I just don't think they're going to make it. In March it looks healthy enough from this side, but when I spin it around, you'll see it's not looking so fresh. I don't think those ones have taken, which is annoying, but I'll leave them for now, just in case some kind of miracle occurs. In April, I think it's safe to say the new cuttings are definitely dead, so they have to be removed. Even if those cuttings actually took, there was still a lot of space, so it's annoying. I feel like I'm never going to get this filled up, but I'll keep trying. I just pulled out the dead crispy ones, and I'm going to try a new technique in a minute. I think if I had like 100 cuttings right from the start, this project would be going really well. But the lack of material is really messing with it, but what can you do? Anyway, it looks like everything's alive here, so we'll just have to work with it. And basically the new plan is, I'm going to try rooted cuttings. Because for some reason, the usual method doesn't want to work. It makes no sense as olives usually just root for fun, so I don't know why they're being difficult all of a sudden. I've been rooting some cuttings on the side, and I'm going to use the special ingredient of sphagnum moss to see if that will give them some extra moisture and make sure they don't dry out. So yeah, I'm going to try and squeeze as much of these roots into the gap along with the sphagnum. This kind of means the roots are going to fuse and end up being the future trunk, but that's fine for now, I just need it to grow, that's all. I think it will work, even if it's a little weird. Trunks and roots can fuse, and they're basically the same thing. So I just filled the gap with sphagnum moss. I think the cuttings may have been drying out in the past, so I'm hoping this helps keep them a little more moist. I then of course wrestled the tree roots down into the small gap, which wasn't easy, and I couldn't really get them all in there. I ended up having to wire the tree into place, which should keep it in there. I think I got enough roots down into the gaps that it should be okay. It's really ugly, but hopefully now the gaps will get filled up. In May it looks good from this side, but still pretty bare from the other side. But I guess the roots are all in there, so at least that's something. But of course this genius plan failed and they all died. They really did not last long. I guess the sphagnum couldn't hold enough water to keep them happy. I did water it quite often, but clearly not enough. I really have no idea why nothing can survive in here. 
Anyway, I decided to revert back to the original plan. I'm trimming it here to use these cuttings just to put them in the gap and maybe this time the sphagnum moss will help them root. I really thought I would have had some fusion by this point, but I haven't even got enough trees in here to even get close. It's annoying, but I guess that's all part of the experiment. And here it is after I pruned it, with all the cuttings and sphagnum in, so we'll see how this goes. And of course, you can tell right away, they're all dead. So I really don't know why they're struggling. I've never seen an olive cutting fail until this experiment. So this is getting ridiculous now. I just remove them and then kind of give up again. I'm just going to let it grow out now and we can try and work out what to do. You'll start to see over the next few months, it starts growing like crazy. So clearly the original trees have rooted and are extremely happy in there. I just don't know why I can't get more trees to root. The problem is, the trees that are in here now will be filling up the pot. I might have one more year and then it's going to be a solid block, if it's not close already. I'm not sure how I'm going to repot this while keeping everything in place. So that's really something I need to think about this winter. Right now this experiment is a massive failure. I really thought I would have had a bit of fusion by this point, but I'm not even close. I think the only thing I can do is just keep trying to take cuttings. As for the repot, I might have to just try and find a bigger pot and just slip pot the whole thing in. Try it that way. You can see here in November it's really overgrown, so plenty of material for new cuttings in spring. And I'll give you one last look close up so you can really see how much space there is in there. I really need a lot more trees and I really need some of these next cuttings to take root and get this project to actually work, as I really want it to work. And here we are now, it's pretty much stopped growing. So a very strange video where I don't have an amazing final result to show you, but anyway, I'll keep trying. So don't forget to check out those links in the description. Thanks for watching, see you next time.